I just think it's fun to read sci-fi for a couple days. This is very dense. It's not as like fun. I love it. I love it so much. I wanted this one to be a five star so bad. Seven books in 72 hours. Is that a good title? Hello friends, it's Kayla. We're starting the vlog on location today because I don't actually have the books that I want to read in this vlog yet. So it is just about to be Dewey's 24 hour readathon. Now, this vlog is going to take place over more days than just that one day, but I want to read as many books as I can in that 24 hour period. I participate every year. I used to do it as like a space themed readathon. I just like created my own theme. Last year I didn't do that and I want to get back to that because I just think it's fun to read sci-fi for a couple days. Dewey's 24 hour readathon has been going on for forever and it's just 24 hours we all start at the exact same time so for me it starts at like 4 a.m and then we all stop exactly 24 hours later um there are little challenges you can participate in buddy reads there's a website i'll link in case you want to know more about it it happens twice a year sometimes it happens more often there are little like mini readathons leading up to the actual event i just participate in the one that happens every april so technically any books that i read during dewey's should be in my april wrap-up but I'm already posting my April wrap up on the day that Dewey's is. I don't think you care. Anyway, my first stop was Value Village. I didn't find anything specific I wanna read here, but I have a couple pickups that I have to do at my other two like local bookstores that are part of the TBR for this video. So I will be trying to read as much as I can in the 24 hours, but then I'll stretch it as many days as I need to to get through the entire TBR that I want to accomplish. Anyway, I thought I'd just take you along with me. So, um. We're starting at Value Village. Here's the things I was looking at. I was also looking at vases. <laughs> and then I took a couple vases around with me in my cart while I was shopping for books to see if I really needed them. The books that I found, this edition of Indian Horse is super stunning. So I'm replacing the copy I already own. And then I found Nothing to See Here by Kevin Wilson, which is about like children who spontaneously combust. Not reading either of those for this video, but that's my mini book haul right now. Now let's head over to Indigo and I will update you again in the vehicle uh, when I have the books. Here's book number one. I didn't film anything in there because I was trying not to get distracted by everything and just pick up my order. This is Sea of Tranquility by Emily St. John Mandel, a lot shorter than I thought it was, so very conducive to a 24-hour readathon. All right, and my local indie, I definitely didn't do as good of a job restraining myself. The one thing that I went in for was Alone Out Here by Riley Redgate. Um, it's a very heavy book, which is interesting. And this is one of my most anticipated reads of the year. So that's exciting. And then I read both of these recently and I liked them so much. I thought I might as well just buy copies of them myself because I had the library editions. And then I also picked up this book called They because I've heard good things about it. Okay, let's talk this TBR through. I'm not sure if I'm delusional, but I feel like for some reason that seven books is completely doable in a couple days. Because <laughs> that's how many things I have here that I would like to read. I'm hoping the Deweys will once again have a bingo sheet because last year they did and that was really fun to look at and see if I could hit a bingo. But without any type of guidance, these are the things, the sci-fi space type things that I want to read. Obsidio, third book in the Illuminae series. This is long, but it's mixed media and it goes by really quickly. So I hope it'll go by really quickly. As I showed you, I've Sea of Tranquility, rather short. Um, this follows a couple different timelines. Like one person is living on the moon in the year 2200 and something. And then we're also in the past and like going up the coast of British Columbia where I live. Like I love that there's always British Columbia wilderness stuff in her stories. And this seems like it's gonna be a bunch of stories kind of tied together, but not really similar to How High We Go in the Dark, which also would fit for this vlog theme, but I already read it and I'm obsessed with it. Actually, Daughter of the Moon Goddess is also something that I could have read for this. Then I showed you I got Alone Out Here, which is Lord of the Flies in Space. Then I have a middle grade, which is like the least fitting for this challenge, um, but it's about space in a contemporary setting or a historical setting. We have this girl and she's learning about, I think it's her grandfather, who was one of the first black engineers for NASA. And I don't really know the plot, but I love Evie's a boy, so I would like to use this excuse to read this. I also have Dead Silence, which I'm probably most excited to read. This was sent to me by Tor Nightfire, and it's a horror sci-fi book. It follows this woman who discovers a spaceship that is supposedly like abandoned or was missing, but there's like stuff 
on it still. And then they is a dystopian, which I feel like fits. And I might as well also read All Systems Red so I can start this murder bot series and just get an idea of what it is and like why not fit some novellas into the 24 hour readathon. What I'm gonna do today is I'm going to read the first chapter of each of these just to get into them and also to give you a little like first impression review. And then once Dewey's comes around, I will decide like which ones I'm actually gonna complete, if not all of them. And I've started in on all of them, so I should be comfortable just like getting right into it at 5 a.m. when the readathon begins. Good morning, my friends. The NASA shirt is on, so you know I mean business. It's actually already three hours into the readathon. You can see right here. April 30th, 7.52 a.m. So the readathon starts at 5 a.m. here. And I just woke up. Rob brought me Starbucks um, before him and Liam headed out for the day. We have baseball. They're going to see the new Sonic movie. Liam's getting a haircut, whatever, whatever. I'm going to be here. I'm going to be reading. And then, of course, because I'm a silly, silly girl, I planned um, a movie-watching party for my channel members and a book club live show on the same weekend as a readathon. <laughs> I don't know what's up with Starbucks recently, but every single time I order my drink, it's different. And, like, I'm ordering it off the menu. It's not something crazy. But the last 10 times I've gotten it, it looks completely different. Like, today it's the same color as my bedding. Sometimes it comes like it's like my skin color, but at least there's no doubt there's coffee in it. It's very strong. I have a watch party today for Pretty Woman. I'm watching it for the first time, so I think that's going to be fun. I am doing it with my friend Erin, who's seen it like a hundred times. So that should be fun. That's not until 2 p.m. So I have a good couple hours, many hours, to get my reading happening. So I did read the first chapter of everything except for Obsidio because like I don't know how to read the first chapter of that. But I'll give you my first impressions of each of the books that I started. First we've got Sea of Tranquility by Emily St. John Mandel and the first chapter was two pages. It's following this guy from England coming over to what's now known as Canada and his like settler life. He's coming over He's like the black sheep of his family and he put down on his paperwork that he's a farmer but he doesn't even know what farming is. And I think it's like plague related conversations. Next up is Dead Silence by S.A. Barnes um, who it's a pen name of another author whose covers look like this. <laughs> so that's very interesting. We're rebranding. Um, the first chapter of that one was another two-pager and it's basically this woman being interviewed after she comes back from space there's been this major catastrophe um her and her crew found this ghost ship and obviously the book is going to follow like those events that happened um but we know that she's fine in the end but there's still something going on with the ship because she's back on earth and all of the people are like your ghost ship is still moving what happened up there like tell us your story and then we're gonna go back in time and we're gonna find out everything next up alone out here by riley redgate also a very intriguing first chapter so there's like a climate crisis and all of the people of earth are prepared and ready to have to escape the second that they get like the signal and there's this ship waiting for them um, but it seems to be like only maybe rich or affluent or politically aligned people who are near the ship. I think she, our main character, is like the president's daughter. And so she jumps on the ship and then somebody on the ship is like, we can't wait for other people and they just like launch. So not everyone who is supposed to be on it is on it. Maybe all the preparations aren't complete, um, but they're off to space. And that one was honestly just as intriguing as Dead Silence. So that's pretty cool. Uh, the next one is They by Kate Dick. And I have respectfully no idea what's going on. <laughs> this is also split up into like vignettes, but I haven't continued. So I don't know where we go if it's like we're changing perspective or if it's just following this main character. I don't even know if it's a main character, but there's like seven of those chapters. The first one, it like introduced this idea of They who I don't fully understand. It seems like I thought it was going to be like this, you know, group of government officials who want to stop artists 
from doing their thing they don't want people to be creative they don't want people to be happy so they like take people's like writing away and art away and they steal your stuff and whatever but the first chapter was these people hanging out in a house together strangely written for sure um and then things were going missing but it seemed like there was an invisible force taking them away like it didn't seem like people had come so that's interesting and i'm intrigued by that as well um very strange i think i might like it then we have my life as an ice cream sandwich by evie's a boy the first chapter was five pages there's like this little comic thing in here and i think basically it's this younger girl how old is she don't remember i want to say 10 um but she's inventing this little world for herself that she's like the captain of a spaceship and she's just going from alabama to new york in this story she just got off the plane then she like hopped on the little suitcase um rotator thing which is like every child's dream and then she went in the back and everyone was like what are you doing here i didn't read the first chapter of this one either because it's so short i was thinking i'll grab the audiobook um and then obsidio i don't remember anything from the other two books except for like people's names but this follows katie her cousin asha and i just don't remember if we've already met asha but her ex-boyfriend just landed planet side so well, i don't know and then this is something to do with androids when i hauled this i was like i don't know what it's about and everyone was like you've never heard of it and i was like no i have heard of it i just don't know what it's about i don't know about you guys but when somebody like talks about a book in a video if i'm not actively already interested in that book like i'm not even listening to their pitch of the book so i've seen this mentioned so many times but like i don't know the plot okay i'm tired of sitting on the floor so come here in deciding what is going to be reasonable for me to be able to read today i'm thinking obviously my shorter things so my plan right now is to read a sea of tranquility first just because the first chapter like was nothing and i want to read the future moments so badly and really understand like what we're talking about and what's going on this is 250 pages and also some of the pages look like this so i checked the audiobook i'm not going to listen to the audiobook but when i looked at it trying to decide what i wanted to listen to today um i think it was only like four hours i think they is reasonable to read today and all systems read and these three i have to decide between the audiobook and it's strange because this one is like a 16 hour audiobook which is very strange for the size of book it is it's only like 350 pages since i want to listen to both of these and i don't want to do them both in the same day let's just keep all of my adult books for today and then i'll read these tomorrow and moving into monday most likely seven books in 72 hours is that a good title there are some Dewey's bingo boards, but I think we'll just check in at the end of the day because that's obviously not going to dictate what I read, but I want to see if I have hit any of the bingos. There's four different bingo boards, but they seem to be the same stuff, just rearranged differently. I don't know anything about Dewey's. <laughs> I don't participate in like the Facebook discussions. I don't sign up for like the buddy reads. I just read for a weekend and then call it my Dewey's 24 hour read. <laughs> It makes no sense but that's okay i want to get some good reading in now when it's just chill i have nothing to do i have no obligations so i'm going to read sea of tranquility first Okay, I'm like halfway through Sea of Tranquility and I love it. I love it so much. I already feel like it's gonna be five stars. I'm just really enjoying the pace, all of the perspectives. Um, what I'll say though is I like obviously this book is a standalone and you can read it however you want, but I really truly feel like you will get so much more out of it 
if you've read both of these. I know that it's a lot to ask of you if you've never read Emily St. John Mandel. So I feel like most people who are interested in this, it's because they like love Station Eleven. And I know The Glass Hotel has not gotten the same amount of hype, but I really enjoyed this. And there are certain references and more so like this really fascinating self-insertion that Emily St. John Mandel is doing and like yeah you can still grasp that just knowing that she's an author who wrote about a pandemic but i just feel like i really want you to read them both first my favorite perspective and the longest chapter so far has been last book tour on earth set in 20 2000 203 is that how you would say that it looks like we are going to get more of this book tour and this character is a pretty prominent character so um she's essentially the author and she has a daughter who she's left um, to go on these book tours and she's being interviewed and she's talking about things like how she wrote all of these books and it wasn't until this one specific one got traction and she's trying not to get used to the attention. There's all of this stuff about her career specifically um, and writing about a pandemic because the author in this book wrote about a pandemic but now she's living through a pandemic and like that that's exactly what happened. With Station Eleven, wrote about a pandemic, now we're in it, and now she's promoting a pandemic book during a pandemic, and like, how strange. The specific quote was something about like, I spend my days talking about the end of the world while trying to ignore that the world is ending. And I just love it. And now there's some weird like, time, I don't wanna say time travel, cause I don't, I think we've got some time travel things. This is that book that I told you about with this really long synopsis that I can never figure out, like, what's really going on. Uh, the book is completely easy to understand. The synopsis is just aggressively detailed. Okay, yeah, it does reference that there's somebody who's going to disrupt the timeline of the universe. So there are some inklings of that. Love the vibe, love the writing. Happy to be here. Okay, I am one hour out from my live show and I'm gonna make myself a little yogurt bowl, so. Let's bring in, actually a big yogurt bowl. This is my lunch. <laughs> I thought this was peach. Apparently it's mango. Oh, let's bring in a second angle so you can see everything that I'm up to. Um, I finished, I almost called it Station Eleven, The Sea of Tranquility. And I'm definitely giving it five stars. I love it. I love it so much. Um, it's tough because like it is a time travel book, sure. It's a about like moon colonies sure but it's not something that you put like solely in the sci-fi category I guess it's like literary sci-fi just like how high we go in the dark is these books were extremely oddly similar there is something tying all of the timelines together and it's the kind of book that I feel like you have to pause a couple times while reading to really think about what the book is is doing. I had so much fun and I'm gonna think on this book very fondly for a while. Is it in my top, I would say right now it's in my top like 15 of the year. I can't really think about what my top 10 would be but I, there's certain things I don't think it would beat out. It is a very pandemic book. I think for some people it's super cathartic um, and has been to read a pandemic book whilst in a pandemic. For me, I have felt no pull to a story like this thus far, uh, the last two years. But with this one having a direct timeline, like at the start of the pandemic in 2020, it was a lot more enjoyable like overall than I thought it would be. Maybe not that I thought it would be because I love Emily St. John Mandel and I trust you know, what she's going to do. But if this book had been pitched to me just generally knowing that it had a 2020 timeline, I don't know that it would have been, I would have been like, ooh, can't wait to read it. I'm out of strawberries, which is really devastating. So I'm just putting mango in my mango yogurt and peaches, chia seeds, banana. And I think that's all I have in the house right now. So as I eat this and I set up for the live show, I'm gonna listen to Dead Silence. Please get a little bit into it because it's so long. I'll see you after my movie. Also in the last couple hours, if you haven't seen me, I attended the live show for Nine Lives, um, Gabby's book troupe book club, just cause I wanted the spoilers, cause I DNF'd the book. And yeah, it sounds 
uh, pretty terrible and not like something that I should have finished. Also, it's independent bookstore day, which I did not know. Um, I've been seeing so many things in my feed, people going to their independent bookstores. I feel bad. By the time the movie is over, my bookstore is gonna be closed, but I did pick up, what was it? Three books for this video from my indie. So like, I feel like I'm participating. Sorry, I just feel like I should show you the mix. I feel like I'm participating and supporting my local indie even though it wasn't today directly, but I'm kind of bummed about it. Well, he's gonna teach her how to play piano. Sure. That's so romantic. <laughs> What's worse, watching a sex scene with your parents or with 300 strangers on the internet? 300 strangers for sure. <laughs> Okay, the movie night was a success. It was a really good time. Um, we figured out how to stream on two YouTube channels at once, which is just really fun. Anyway, I don't know what I rate Pretty Woman. I'm gonna give it a three and a half out of five. <laughs> I said I don't know and then I knew immediately. So I actually got through almost half of the audiobook. I was cleaning up my house for a bit um, and now it's been like half an hour since the live show ended. It's most definitely the type, actually no, it's like 40% through uh, the type of audiobook that is read pretty slowly so you can listen to it on like three times speed and that's at least for me how fast I would be reading it physically still grasping all the concepts and everything like that um it's interesting there are some moments that are getting scary so it is her like relaying what happened on the ship but you know that she you know came back to earth but so I thought it would be just like the story in space and the anticipation of like finding out if these people survive. But since we got that intro, I was like, okay, well, how's it gonna be so scary? Um, and it's not even necessarily what they're experiencing as the crew. They encounter this ghost ship that's been missing forever. It was like the only luxury spacecraft in existence. So people went on it kind of like the Titanic and then it just vanished. And so them seeing it again, they're like, okay, well, we should explore it because one, if there's anybody left on there somehow, like they found out how to grow their own food and they've been alive these last, like, I don't know how long it's been, 20 years maybe, we have an obligation to help them. But also it's a luxury ship and it's just sitting there in perfect condition. So if we went and took a couple things, we would be rich. So they go and they check it out. And I'm not gonna give any spoilers from here on out, don't worry but it's not so much like scary things happening to the crew. It's them trying to figure out what happened to everybody on that ship because the things that they're encountering are confusing and the scenes are very tense and weird and the things that they're encountering and the scenarios that they're trying to come up with that might've happened are just very frightening. Now I wanna check the bingo boards and I wanna see if we can complete a bingo because they're not all reading things. Some of them are activities. So let's just check bingo number one and figure out where I can get a bingo. Read in your favorite location. I did that. Share your snacks on social media. Okay, well this is social media and I shared my yogurt bowl, so that's done. Review one book you've read on Goodreads, Amazon, etc. I mean, I can do that. I probably won't do that during the readathon because I don't want to take my time to write a review instead of reading. Okay, so we're not completing the top row. The next one is enjoy your favorite beverage. Water. Read a novella. Oh my gosh. I was just about to tell you that I'm going to go take a bath and read this while I'm in there because I'm enjoying the audiobook of this so much that I don't want to do a tandem experience. I just want to listen to it. This is my one audiobook of the weekend, at least for now. Um, so I was going to go read like a hundred pages in the bath and immediately complete another book. Read in three different locations. I've read in my bed. I've read right here and I'm going to read in the bath. Next, exercise for 30 minutes. Bonus if listening to an audiobook. I guess I could go for a walk before my bath <laughs> and start a new series. Oh, I am with Murderbot. Let's go for a walk.
Okay, so while I was in the bath, I look like this now. Um, it's a lot lighter. I've been through many things. <laughs> Brie was doing reading sprints, so I watched her do that and read along with her. I finished they. I have no idea what to think of this. Um, then Rob brought me home my favorite salad, which was incredible, and a creme brulee cheesecake from where's this from Joey. joey's mm -hmm. it is life-changing that's crazy oh my god that's so good and then we played our nightly um wordle pokemon wordle worldle framed family hurdle, hurdle family game night i got a little more into dead silence i still really like it i don't know if it's reasonable for me to finish it tonight because i also have to prepare for the book club live tomorrow and since it's the last day of the month i have to post all of the goodreads um sections of our next book club read so people can discuss as they go but at least i finished they and i'm still trying to finish all systems read and it's nine o'clock where has time gone i don't know and what is this book? I don't know either. Um, it's strange, not in plot, but in like, what is it? The concept is clear in that the author's talking about the idea of they and um, taking like nonconformity and they want people who you know are single and choose not to be married they want people who write things and create things that are against the status quo to be punished um and so they're taking those things away we did meet the actual people briefly and it was kind of confusing but they are people um but it's just very stilted sentences so it's like i played a game i lost the next one i will stay here tonight Jed moved the lamp. My dog barked. But I don't really know what it was like about. There was no real plot to follow. There kind of was. There's a group of like nine people and you never get the narrator's name but it is as I. Um, so it's like I did this, I did this and then it references all the other people. But it's written in these chapters and not every person from the group is named in each chapter, which leads me to believe upon finishing it that every chapter is written from a different one of their perspectives. But I would have to reread the entire thing with that in mind to figure out if that's true or not. Because like sometimes the things that people were going through, like it felt like it could be the same person but also it was so disjointed that it would make sense if it was all a different person. But outside of just being an interesting experience for the reader, um, it doesn't like reveal something or say anything extra. There was a lot more animal cruelty than I was expecting um, and a lot less overt like representation. For some reason, I thought that people had said that this was um you know revolutionary for its time and i believe it's a lesbian author and so maybe i was expecting some more just like clear language and identity being discussed maybe there was some references that i just missed or didn't take them for what they were um but overall i'm not gonna rate this good morning friends it's another great day to read i'm sorry i left you i abandoned you last night i was up really late trying to finish the two books I was reading, spoiler alert, I didn't, but I got so close. I read All Systems Red, and then I read all but 50 pages of Dead Silence. This is such a long audiobook. And it's seriously going places that I did not expect it to. I don't wanna give any spoilers. Let me reread the synopsis. Okay, no, I can't give you anything. Any plot points about like when, where the story really takes place. I feel like I don't typically read horror like this. Um, horror for me, often the scary part all exists in one place. So it's like a haunted house and they're in the haunted house 
and then they leave the haunted house and the story's over or they never leave the haunted house and the story's over but because this is a mix of sci-fi there's like ebbs and flows to what's going on and we're out of the horror then we're in the horror then we're learning about stuff back in the horror so i'm excited to wrap this up right now before i have my live show for my book club i didn't update you last night because rob and i were just peacefully lying together reading he's reading this it's called so low leveling don't ask me what it is while i was reading all systems read and i'm sorry to report i'm only giving this three stars i know some of you every time i mention it you're like oh this is gonna be your new favorite thing and so i feel bad that it's not because like i want to love it the same way you want me to love it there's nothing that i can really fault this book for doing because it is a novella and it's intentionally a novella series so you're not supposed to get to know all the characters you're not supposed to you know be really deep into a specific mystery everything happens really quickly and it's all kind of surface level besides getting to know Murderbot themselves so it's like an AI who there are people who go on expeditions and they're always supplied a Murderbot an Android and this one you know hacks into its whatever and goes by Murderbot the cover made it seem so much more serious than it is um, this robot is very human-like and sarcastic and funny and has like social anxiety and is a little quirky and is like watching Netflix and talking about how they'd rather be watching their soap operas than interacting with these people. It's definitely not what I expected. It's a lot more fun, which is good, but I don't know. I don't think I care enough about anything really going on to make me continue in the series. So for my first day, for all of Dewey's 24-hour readathon, I read four things almost um and it amounted to 780 pages total my tbr for the entire three days is 2040 so that means i need to read like 700 pages a day so i did that can't believe i was toying with the idea of making this two days like who am i i had an entire live show yesterday i have a live show today i'm I have to edit my wrap up still to go up today. I always have so much end of the month, beginning of the month stuff to prepare. Like I need to do Goodreads stuff for the book club. I need to do like a members post write up that I can put out. I have to order some books for people to participate in the book club, just a lot. But I am doing reading sprints with Brie later today. So the plan is finish this up right now, do the live show for the book club, then I have three to four hours in between the two live shows where I'm gonna try to read the entirety of Alone out here. Is that doable? 400 pages. I might grab the audiobook because it's actually narrated by the author, which is very cool. And then to hit my page count by the end of the day, I just have to read 100 pages of each of these during the reading sprints. And I think that's totally doable. Though I also need to spend a little bit of time with my family. So I think we're gonna go play tennis somewhere in the day so maybe you'll throw in that montage here even if it happens later just so you have something to look at before i update you again about my final thoughts on dead silence check it out we have the whole court to ourselves i've decided i'm gonna be a professional uh tennis player but i'm really bad right now it's also very windy you stay here and watch us play okay here's what i'll do I'll edit it together so it looks like we're actually playing a game and not missing every single shot. Ready? Do you want to see our competition? Say yes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He's going out of frame. What do we do? That was like 20 something. Pretty good, kiddo. It was 31? All right, I believe you. We can watch the footage back to prove it. I wanted this one to be a five star so bad. I really thought we could get there. The first half of it was great. And it's tough because I don't think there's one specific thing I would critique about it. It just turned out to not be my favorite 
thing overall. While I did find it creepy and I felt the tension, I enjoyed the reveals of certain things. Just generally, it's not my perfect type of story. I didn't necessarily want the romance that was in here unless it's going to be like equally romance and plot like a really super developed romance where the romance is like why I picked it up I I didn't need that Claire's a tough perspective to be reading from I overall enjoyed her um but it was a little too repetitive she was very self-deprecating and very much a victim with a lot of her perspectives on herself and a lot of the book is about her personal journey of like discovering what she wants out of life and that's not what I'm looking for in this genre. I'm also looking for ambiguity. I like things to get weird and it got weird but then it got uh I don't know Hardy Boys Scooby-Doo like a little after school specially. <laughs> While like yeah I can respect how it ended and I think that is the right ending that's not the ending that I would prefer in this type of story. My rating is pretty much in the middle. I think I have to give it, I would even say a three and a half. Like I wasn't disliking this while I was reading it, but looking at it as a whole, like it's not great for me. <laughs> I'm off to do my live show and then I will read some of this. I'm halfway through alone out here, like exactly at the halfway point. And I don't know. I went back on Goodreads to check the date and it was April 2020 that I added this to my TBR. And yeah, two years ago, Lord of the Flies in Space was exactly what I thought I wanted out of sci-fi. And now I just don't know anymore. I love Lord of the Flies um, and I love space. And with the integration of like romance and something else to care about outside of the dynamics of this huge group of characters that seemed intriguing at the time. I just don't think it's offering anything that I wasn't anticipating it to be, which doesn't make sense as a flaw. <laughs> yeah, it's what you expect from a Lord of the Flies inspired story. It's got the political dynamics and different people trying to take control of things and different people not trusting each other and doing dangerous things behind each other's backs and it's, kind of interesting i'm gonna put it down for now which likely means that i'm not gonna complete a single book today hello everyone how y'all doing uh kayla was late you know i always gotta <laughs> wait for her <laughs> yeah right i've never been late in my life <laughs> Uh, I was for sure late. It was me. So I'm going to start Obsidio right now. Oh, nice. Um, I almost bought that book in, Jim in Jemina, right? That's the other book. Mm -hmm. The first one's Illuminate. Illuminate. Have you read Illuminate? No, I was going to buy it, but I was like, um, maybe not, because it was very expensive when I saw it at the bookstore. Yeah, I always buy mine secondhand, because these are big expensive books also want to read physically so i have my life as an ice cream sandwich which isn't sci-fi but it does have like space and science related conversations so i'm yeah. going to read this physically and there's some pretty pictures to see so i'm excited about that oh nice it's a graphic novel no but it's just like every chapter starts with a little comic strip she dreams about being a spaceship driver <laughs> whatever you call it and so she invents this little world that she lives in. I think that's what these little pages are for. Okay. Okay. I love a spaceship driver. I do. A captain? A captain? So you can no, so no. It's spaceship driver from here on out. So like each of these books is 600 and something pages, but this audiobook is hours longer. And it seems like there's less just like fun pages. It's all just really dense text. I got to page 46 of my oh. life as an ice cream sandwich. I really like it. I love Evie's a boy. I've never not enjoyed an Evie's a boy. So I'm really excited that she came out with middle grade. I don't know if this is her only middle grade, but I'm having a great time. Hello again. Good to see you. I can't tell you why I've been failing to vlog in the evenings so much, uh, but it happens. I was live for like six hours. 
Um, also, I got a new washer and dryer delivered and that just caused a little disruption naturally, but also I got in a fight with my husband stopping him from deadlifting these a thousand pounds up the stairs. I lost for a bit and then he was stuck in the stairs. I can't help him. I convinced him to wait until somebody could come help and then it all went well and now I have a new washer dryer and it's beautiful. Let me show you in a second because I love it. I'm halfway through all of these and I'm trying to finish them all today. So you can wish me luck with that. Am I loving any of them? Actually, this is the order in which I'm enjoying them. So we'll see how my day goes. I don't have any plans except I have to take Liam to baseball. Um, and I know that Olivia and Katie are doing some reading sprints, so I'll probably try to read while that's happening. Come check out my new appliances. This is what adults care about. Here's the thing. What signified wealth for me as a teen? There's, there's, well, there's three things. One was people who had laundry machines that sung you a song when they're done. I don't actually know how to use it. You can't go lower than four minutes. Okay, towels, four more minutes for you. Okay, we'll, we'll wait for that to be done. So shout out to my landlord for buying those and making me pretend that I'm rich. The second thing, I don't know why I'm taking you anywhere with me. I'm really just trying to kill time until the dryer's done. Um, thing number two was an ice machine or water machine in your fridge, which clearly haven't haven't reached that point yet. Ooh, but I do. I do have a Brita. Oh my God. Which is basically the same thing. You know what else I have? Little Caesars. I haven't had Little Caesars since I was in high school. There was one across the street from Rob's school and we would always go and get like $5 hot and runnies and like dollar, uh, what are they called? Crazy bread. And I was feeling nostalgic last night and I was like, Rob, you need to grab Little Caesars. Um, are these everything that I remember? No. Do I have a terrible stomach ache today? Yeah. Am I gonna eat more of these because they gave us a whole second one by accident? Am I gonna eat them cold for breakfast? Yes, yes, indeed. Not sponsored by Little Caesars. I know sometimes it's confusing, like what's sponsored and what isn't? Don't worry, the massive conglomerate, this man's not sponsoring me. The third thing that signified wealth for me, which I now recognize as more of like a couponing thing actually, is if in your bathroom you not only had like the product that you needed but if you looked under the sink there was like five to ten more for as soon as you were done the idea of not having to live with like having your shampoo bottle and then like finishing it and then not knowing when you were going to get a new shampoo and just like filling it with water and shaking it up for like a week straight that was wealth to me i think my dryer's about to sing us a song It's long too and annoying and I'm gonna... I'm definitely gonna turn off that setting immediately. <laughs> anyway, first up is Obsidio. This is very dense. It's not as like fun as the other books. Like I feel like there's so much more to learn and there's less breaks to like, you know, do this while I'm reading. So that's a bit of a bummer. But there are some pictures and various things. So, um, yeah, this is happening. First book done of the day. Uh, three stars. So The Illuminae Files is this series about like mega corporations in space, hundreds of years in the future. 
there are these threats to various uh, planets, space colonies, people on ships escaping, um, there's plagues, there's a lot of action, it's a wild time. Um, the reason that Illuminae worked so well for me was because there was this relationship as the main focus that was just really fun. It was like the banter and you didn't get to see them really interact. It was more like via IMs, texts, whatever, because it's a dossier essentially where every single page is a different thing. Surveillance footage, diary entries, radio messages. There's a countdown throughout it and it was just really, really fun. Um, this feels like a standalone experience. Like, you can just enjoy this as it is. Gemina was good. I really enjoyed it. It did have some of the same things that this had. So it was like the same type of banter between the two characters, but their relationship was different. Certain murderous things were happening and they continued to happen. A lot of the reveals were the same. So like you'd think something was happening, but the book was tricking you and then there would be a reveal. But Gemina doesn't feel like you can stop here. So it doesn't feel like a complete story, in my opinion, until you read Obsidio. So it's like, you can just read one or you have to read all three. But three isn't a good enough conclusion, in my opinion, to have like positive feelings about the series as a whole. Because the third book was so repetitive. It was like every single character in here was in there the exact same banter was present but not just amongst the characters we already knew there was a whole new relationship to care about but it was like the exact same dynamic and relationship and since all of these characters are back which is like fun you don't really get to care about these new characters and then everything that happened in here that was surprising you can expect the authors to do certain things and try to pull off the same things and they do. So there's nothing surprising in here. I think it actually felt a little bit lazy. There definitely wasn't as many different styles of documents and it was just like surveillance footage the majority of the time. So it was like we'd finish a big surveillance chapter and I'd be like, oh, let's do something fun. And then we get one fun thing and then it was back to surveillance. I do still agree with everybody. The audiobook is amazing if you wanna to listen to it that way. It's not just full cast, but it's dramatized. I'm glad I finally got through it because I like wrapping up series because them sitting on my shelves staring at me for years doesn't make me happy. But I kind of wish that I had just read this one. So I'm done with that. And I think I'm going to move on to just like the contemporary or slightly historical story of just a, a young girl living her life. So I just finished this. I was going to come on well, I am still coming on to gush about it. I think it's so wonderful. I think my final official rating is a 4.5. There was like a couple little storylines that I wish we got a little bit more of, like the grandfather. It's really not about her grandfather. I kind of misinterpreted um, the synopsis. Her grandfather is sick, so she is sent away and she's going to stay with her dad in New York. And it's like her first time encountering all of these strange things and all these people she doesn't know. And she's super shy and nerdy and it's hard for her to like get along with people. She gets integrated into this friendship group where they all are like different flavors of ice cream. There's a lot of like hip hop and rap stuff and like um, these little crews that are rap battling and um, she just wants to be on the crew of a spaceship. I guess it would get a little boring for the age demographic if there was like letters from her grandpa or like his history at NASA, so it's fine. But it's just about her and her big imagination. It was really fun. And then I go check the Goodreads to see what all my friends have rated it. And this has like a 3.2 average rating, which is super low for Goodreads. And so many people are like DNF'd at 15%, at 20%. Um, how they hated the main character, how they found her annoying. And then a whole bunch of reviews are talking about how um, she's not neurotypical, but how the book never like addresses that. And I just don't know what that has to do with like anything. <laughs> I don't think I've been more confused by other people's reviews in a very long time. I thought it was really wonderful. Like, yeah, she's in her head a lot. And she's just like, I don't know, she's Liam's age and she just like has this big imagination and she wants to be on a spaceship so she pretends that she is and it's like i think her way of coping 
with everything that she's encountering because she's in a new space and she's uncomfortable and whatever and I don't know if she does have autism which a bunch of reviews are talking about I just don't know why that would make someone not like it or if that's not why they didn't like it like what I don't know what they like did they want a story of her like being diagnosed with autism I don't really know everyone's review is totally valid like you can feel however you want about a book I'm not gonna fight you on that definitely very low sci-fi well no, not sci-fi at all there was definitely space and science things um that our main character cared about i just i think she's really cool i know some kids have dressed up as her for halloween which is very cool it was on like a children's um bestseller list so obviously people do like it anyway i'm gonna go finish alone out here which i am enjoying more now um, I'm in the final like quarter and there is a lot more space stuff so it's not just Lord of the Flies vibes it's like there are things to learn there are things in space and experiences that we're having outside of just like the social dynamics so I'm now having a good time with that one I did it hooray it's finished um, my contacts are driving me nuts so I'm not gonna look you in the eye for this wrap up I don't think it's much of a surprise that this is a three star um i struggled my way through it a little bit uh it got interesting it covered all the things you expect it to like humanity and power dynamics and complicity lee is a super interesting character to follow because she's grappling morally with what to do she wants to be a mediator and she wants to bring peace but you know she puts herself in a position of power and just automatically assumes that and people don't appreciate that and it's like these kids have to build an entire political system because what happens when one of them does something terrible what happens to them who decides what happens to them what happens when people don't agree with what should happen to that person what happens when everyone is in danger like who's in charge should it just automatically be the oldest or the ones who are naturally politically affiliated in real life a lot of questions were brought up and it was very interesting to follow. I just didn't care too much about all of the very teen dynamics at the forefront. It's like a part of me wants to go, that's great that the book, even though it's set in space, characters and it's like the end of the world, everyone pretty much assumes that their family is back on earth like completely dead. So there's trauma involved, um, but they're still worrying about like, kissing people and acne and you know I do think that's real but also the pairing of a lot of different tones lost me a bit as an author's first like sci-fi book I don't think we can be too hard on it uh, there are a lot of logistical things that if you read adult sci-fi you're like um okay that doesn't make a lot of sense like that they're focused on you know reproducing and this idea not actively but they're planning on having multiple generations. They know that the ship is going to outlast them. So they're having all these conversations. But then their actions in the moment didn't really match what they seemed to be thinking about and theories going on. But also they're teens. So like that's an easy out for any questionable um, morals and behavior <laughs> because they're not mature enough to be making these life altering decisions. So all's well, no hard feelings. Definitely recommend it for its target audience. And to wrap things up, I read seven things. A three star, another three star, set in space. Another three star, set in space. Another three star. Oh gosh, did you guys notice this whole time how this was going? I'm not reading that. Um, my highest rating was the least <laughs> spacey book, or my second highest rating, and then my highest was the one that you would probably expect me to love. I did complete the bingo board in the one day, so that feels like a success. And I will be participating in the next Dewey's. I'll see you before then, but I will also see you in the next Dewey's for more sci-fi. I haven't burned myself out. I don't feel like I read too much of the same thing. Um, that's definitely not what's contributing to any of the ratings you see here. I actually have plans to read another sci-fi very soon. So that's it. I'll see you later. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.